His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of Bahrain-U.S. strategic partnership, noting the Kingdom's commitment to furthering bilateral cooperation and coordination in light with MOUs and agreements between the two countries. His Royal Highness underscored the significance of the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement, which forms a cornerstone for wide multi-sectoral development. The latest regional and international developments were reviewed, including developments in Gaza, in which His Royal Highness emphasized the Kingdom's firm stance towards the Palestinian cause and its unwavering commitment to reaching a peaceful, lasting and fair solution in support of Palestinians' legitimate right to establish an independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of protecting civilian lives, de-escalation and releasing of hostages and detainees, and guaranteeing the delivery of humanitarian aid to Gaza in accordance with international humanitarian laws. His Royal Highness reiterated the importance of security and stability as an essential foundation for development that benefits all. He also recognized the U.S.'s prominent role in upholding international peace, protecting and securing international maritime navigation, and promoting the free flow of international trade. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Educational Charitable Trust and chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. The National Guard Commander, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, held a meeting with Pakistan's Chief of Army Staff, General Asim Manir, at the general headquarters of the Pakistani Army in Rawalpindi. His Highness is on an official visit to Pakistan to participate in the Pakistan Day celebrations on March 23rd. General Asim Manir welcomed His Highness, expressing thanks for accepting his invitation to participate in Pakistan's Day. His Highness affirmed the advanced level of relations reached between the National Guard and the Pakistani Army regarding cooperation and exchange of expertise. He stressed keenness to continue bolstering bilateral relations to serve the interests of the two countries. The two sides discussed ways to enhance military cooperation and coordination in all fields. They also reviewed regional and global issues of mutual interest. The Foreign Affairs Minister and Chairman of the National Human Rights Committee, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, delivered a statement marking the Arab Human Rights Day. He affirmed that Bahrain forms a pioneering model for respecting human rights, expressing pride in the Kingdom's honorable human rights record, stemming from His Majesty's pioneering initiatives. He said that Bahrain enjoys integrated modern legislative and judicial systems and measures to enhance respect for public rights and freedoms, as well as preserve human dignity. Dr. Zayani reviewed the Kingdom's success story regarding the exercise of citizens of their full political rights through free and fair parliamentary and municipal elections. He also highlighted Bahrain's success in enhancing the legislative and oversight of the Shura and Representatives Councils, citing the legislative guarantees to protect the rights and of all. The minister added that celebrating Arab Human Rights Day 2024 represents an important occasion to shed light on Bahrain's modern and pioneering laws and strategies in safeguarding the rights of the family, women, children, youth, people with disabilities and the elderly. He affirmed Bahrain's steadfast resolve to continue enhancing its achievements in the human rights field and sustainable development fields, including the implementation of the National Human Rights Plan 2022-2026, whose projects have already been 40% completed. The Arab Human Rights Day is a day in which the Kingdom of Bahrain remembers the extent of the progress and achievements made at the local, regional and international levels in this field, through which the originality of human rights principles was embodied and the identity and culture of the Bahraini society, which was reflected in a tangible reality in the various human rights institutions in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The directives of His Majesty the King gave the legislative, legal and oversight institutions their effective role by the consolidation of the state of institutions, law, justice and equality among all without discrimination, with the full support of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. During the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, Bahraini people have come to enjoy an integrated and organized atmosphere of human rights frameworks, most notably the National Institution for Human Rights, the General Ombudsman, the Prisoners and Detainees Rights Commission, and the Special Investigation Unit of the Public Prosecution, which made Bahrain enhance its status globally in the human rights field. 
Great support and greater interest has been provided by the Kingdom to regional and international efforts concerned with human rights, starting from various international human rights organizations to international human rights committees and activities, all the way to the human rights mechanisms organized under the framework of the Arab League, represented by the Permanent Arab Committee for Human Rights and the Human Rights Committee. Bahrain always seeks to implement initiatives in this important field, the most important of which is the call of His Majesty the King to establish the Arab Court for Human Rights and other contributions at the Arab and international levels. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil Assoumi, affirmed that improving the human rights system and establishing a culture of tolerance, coexistence and acceptance of others were the most important foundations of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King. He praised the pioneering efforts made by Bahrain to promote and protect human rights. He renewed his call for the speedy ratification of the status of the Arab Court for Human Rights, which came as a generous initiative from His Majesty the King. He said that Bahrain has a long record of achievements in the field of human rights, thanks to the support of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf, Nawaf al Maudid stressed the importance of the private sector's social responsibility initiatives in supporting the Sustainable Development Goals. The Minister appreciated the contributions of all partners in supporting the Zakat Fund's ongoing programs, including projects implemented in Ramadan. He affirmed the Ministry's aspiration to expand the partnership with the private sector in diversifying the work of the Zakat and Charity Fund and implementing its charitable programs, which aim to enhance the role of charity in deepening social social solidarity. The permanent representative of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the UN in New York, Ambassador Jamal Rawai'i, participated in the Security Council's open discussion session. He stressed the importance of the Security Council having a prominent and tangible role with the aim of enhancing its capacity, transparency and efficiency to ensure its ability to address the root causes of conflicts. Rawai'i stressed the importance of conducting more interactive consultations and increasing the participation of non-member states. He pointed out that the use of veto threat might prevent the Council from acting on issues of particular importance, which would have serious consequences. He also stressed the importance of reaching a ceasefire in Gaza and facilitate the arrival of urgent humanitarian aid. The Supreme Council for the Environment announced that the annual two-month ban on catching and selling crab has gone into effect and will run until May 15th. The ban is in line with the Edict 52 of 2016 within the framework of the Kingdom's keenness to protect marine wealth and biodiversity. The SCE said that marine wealth teams will monitor the implementation of the ban in cooperation with the relevant authorities to prevent violations, calling on everyone to comply fully with the provisions of the decision. The Meteorological Directorate forecasts cloudy weather with rain that may become thundery at times. Wind speeds will be mainly southeasterly, 7 to 12 knots, reaching 15 to 20 at times, with gusts that may reach 30 knots until morning. Sea state is predicted to be 1 to 2 feet inshore, 3 to 5 feet offshore, which may rise up to 7 feet during gusts. Temperature will remain at a maximum of 28 degrees Celsius, dropping to a minimum of 20. Humidity ranges between 95% and 44, 45%.